Hey, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's talk for a moment about the difference between good storytelling and amateur shitty storytelling. <laughs> now, I'm not going to uh, lambaste your storytelling. That's not why I'm here. I'm just pointing out the fact that there is good storytelling and there is bad storytelling. What makes good storytelling good? It's the things that the professionals put in there that the amateurs just don't understand how to insert in advance. And this takes practice. It takes practice. It takes practice. But we'll get into that in a little while. Okay. So the first thing is that we have focus. Okay, you want to focus. Just like I started this whole thing, mentioning the issue. I knew what I was going to talk about. My talking is based on pre-planned understanding of what the topic is. Okay, and when I know what the topic is, I mean, I actually laid this stuff out. That way I can bring it. And this is an instructional video, which may differ from performance level presentation, but is there a bee? Oh, there's a bumblebee. I'm going to have to help that bumblebee in a little while. I will help that bumblebee because I love animals and bumblebees are not here to harm me. In fact, the bumble is in here because the bumble got lost. The bumble should be outside and therefore I shall liberate the bumble just as I will liberate your understanding of storytelling right now. That in fact is a way of <laughs> addressing what I'm talking about with focus. You see, no loose tangents. I understood I was live editing myself, and you may recognize the concept of live editing if you've been in any of my other tutorials and trainings, because live editing is important, understanding what you're doing so that you can go off on a tangent and bring it back, and we have no loose tangents, okay? Loose tangents equal death, okay? Loose tangents equal death. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about the fact that you'll get killed. Does that register? Yeah, death is right there in the corner. I don't need to adjust my composition of frame. When I say death, <laughs> I'm not talking about death as in like, you know, you'll get killed. But I am talking about losing people. You don't want to lose people. You want to make sure that people are engaged and interested, and they are engaged and interested when you are leading them someplace important and you let them know that you know where you're going. Loose tangents are tangents that just kind of go nowhere, fade out, die. <laughs> There's the death again. Ooh, the death analogy. Death, destruction, mayhem, mutilation. Oh, my goodness. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. You bring it back. So just like I will liberate the bee, the bumblebee, so shall I liberate you with your understanding of how to avoid the mistakes in storytelling. That is me bringing it back around so that you can get this. Okay? Now, the second thing is that your story will always have a beginning, middle, and an end. And I want to talk about that in just a moment. Okay? Because order is important, okay? Having a beginning and a middle and an end is very valuable. And it doesn't need to be beginning, middle, end. You can understand that it can be an end, middle, beginning. Just like the movie, in, uh, not Inception, um, Oh, what was that great movie by uh, Christopher Nolan? It was his first. And um, <laughs> Memento. 
Okay, memento is a fascinating story structure, but the whole story has a beginning, middle, end, but it happens to be end, middle, beginning. And it's perfectly fine as long as you understand the order that you're doing so you can plan it and pay attention to it and keep it moving forward. Okay, in this particular instructional training, even I am paying attention to my intro and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I planned out, you know, I erased these so I can write them in with drama. <laughs> and I have them written right over there so I can make sure I pull the thing forward from beginning to middle to end. So we have our focus, okay? And you pay attention to that so you don't have any loose ends. Good. Um, the, or loose tangents, I mean. And loose tangents are important because you remove them because they provide the death factor in people watching you, and we want to relieve you and us of that. Yo, Queen Boss Lady, what's happening? Nice to see you. Let me know if you have any questions here. The reason that I'm in this on StreamYard is so you can comment if you happen to catch this live. Good. So the order, you plan the order so you can continue to move yourself forward through this and you don't just kind of also end up going off on some loose tangent, which as we all know equals death. Good. The next thing is we want to understand what our most important aspect that we present to people in the big picture of how to make this thing exciting is, and I consider that the reveal, okay? The big reveal is something that people must know, and at some point in the thing, you, you know, in the story, you will want to inform them of the big epiphany. It may, in fact, come at the beginning. It may, in fact, come at the end, but you want to understand what is that big reveal and where do you place it, okay? Now, in this particular case, I am scattering little tidbits of reveal throughout this simple little training storytelling story about storytelling, <laughs> about stories. And in fact, at the end, I will describe to you the big reveal, which is the special sauce. And, you know, this may or may, you know, hopefully this will not be mind blowing stuff because you're already aware of some of this. I just want you to get to a point where you say, oh, yeah, right. Of course. Hmm. Right. Good. So the placement of your reveal is really valuable because when you know it, you can plan on building that up. And then when you drop that little thing in wherever it needs to be, you're doing so knowingly. Cool. So the fourth one, what could possibly come from practice. Why would practice be such an important component of making sure you get this stuff right? It produces clarity. It elic elicits clarity, okay? Isn't that right, Queensy, Queen Boss Lady, my fine friend? Clarity is what we want here because clarity offers to the people who are paying attention to you a belief that you are trustworthy, that you are someone who they can place their good faith in. You are someone who has a certain amount of authority and leadership based on an understanding that you can bring them where they need to be brought with 
How else do I need to say it? I don't need to. With clarity. And that clarity can only be perfected and achieved through practice. You don't just do it once. You don't do any of this stuff once. In fact, my finest, most esteemed, high-level professional international touring peers and colleagues who I've come in contact with over the years are badasses whose names you know, and they end up, you know, like comedians, okay? The comedians who look like they're just doing it off the cuff, they're not. Most of them have memorized everything everything they're doing, their pauses, their surprise at their pauses, their own way of enjoying their joke, their moments where they suddenly realize that they should be talking about something else. It's all planned. They got that way by doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And that's why they are on big TV shows. When I performed on the David Letterman show in front of 40 million people, our stuff was perfected over years. And when we brought it, we brought it like gangbusters. And we did that at every high level gig. Those high level gigs, they don't just let you in because, oh, this ought to be fun. They don't take that kind of chance. You perfect your stuff, you get good at it, you practice. Cool. And what, what could possibly be the special sauce? Why would you be here garnering valuable information from some hairy American troll like myself? It's because I happen to understand a very valuable component of this. The other things that I teach the things that I offer as mastery skills has everything to do with making this stuff entertaining. Now, what does that mean? Entertainment does not mean like ha ha fun and funny all the time, although that's an important part of it. <laughs> this bumble, as soon as I'm done with this, I will catch him or her in a little glass. I will slide a piece of paper underneath. I will bring it to a window and I will release that bumble to the world. In the meantime, it pains me to see that it is lost and frustrated because it doesn't like being lost and frustrated, nor do you. And that is why what I say to you here has everything to do with being entertaining. And being entertaining isn't about, you know, jazz hands. And it's not always about high energy, hey, fun, crazy. It's not that. But it's also not monotone, bland crap. Entertaining means enjoying yourself while you deliver in such a way that you relate to other people that you're enjoying it. Why? Because when you out there see me enjoying this, it becomes something that is easy to watch. And your brain can multitask. You can enjoy it and take in all the information that I'm giving you as gold ways to construct, ways to plan, ways to methodically improve your storytelling, all at the same time. That makes it fun for you. And when I make your experience an interesting one here, I have entertained you in some capacity. And it can be serious. It can be poignant. It doesn't have to be fun, funny comedy, and it doesn't have to be dead serious, always maudlin. If you are talking about something you know, and you are talking about something that happens to have a very serious subject matter, you and I both know that when you're in a corner talking privately to another professional in that difficult stuff, 
you folks can actually say things in a joking way. You don't need to talk about death and sorrow and destruction and trauma in a sad, somber way. You can throw in some straightforward, dark humor about it. And you can do that because it is not about being so serious all the time just because your topic is serious. There is a certain level of entertainment value that is really, really important. Why is that my special sauce? Because I know that without that, you don't end up standing apart from everybody else. And that's what I offer. That's what I teach my high ticket clients, how to extract their core badass truth in a delightful, impactful, intense, personal, stylized, honest, authentic way. So I hope this helped you. Any questions? You're welcome to throw anything out here while I am here on this uh, StreamYard presentation for you. Otherwise, we'll just wrap it up for now. There will be more later. Reach out to me when you need to. I know that my high-ticket, personalized, customized, training is not something that everyone can afford. But I have a lot of other high level, high performing, helpful programs that are more affordable, that will get you where you need to go. And that's why I offer it all here. But in the meantime, you know where to find me, reach out to me. I want to help you get there. I want to help you have the success you deserve and your clients deserve from you so that you can be getting enough money so you can turn around and afford me at my high ticket stuff. It's a win-win. Here we are. Go get them. My best to you. See ya.